Was there ever a moment where you thought, I'm going too far here, people's reaction is not good, or were you always okay? No, I quite like going too far. I think I think you could, if you want to find where the line is, you can only find it by crossing it. Well, it was a very oppressive time in the 80s, and um, I felt very self-righteous about uh, my sexuality, and I, f- I felt that the world, it needed, you know, ignorance and fear and prejudice are all, all inter- interlinked. Um, certainly prejudice and ignorance I thought well if they're ignorant it needs to be demystified so I I went on stage and very graphically (laughs) explained what gay men do to each other and um, I I feel the public benefited from that (laughs) did we need to know though that's the question I like I like making people laugh but I also like uh, the sharp intake of breath that you get from people where they they can't quite believe that you've done that I mean it's not it's not wouldn't be shocking now and uh, I try not to go on and on and on about my sexuality in my new show um, because, because, you know, people just shrug at you. But uh, I think we've got the drift as well, haven't we? Do you know, you know which side of the church I sit on. <laughs> We're not wondering about that. And then, of course, you go on to be a huge successful TV star. It wasn't mainstream ever. Did you know you were innovating at the time or was it just your life? Um, I didn't know how else it was supposed to be. It was a very different time when I did Sticky Moments for Channel 4. None of the executives even came to the recording. You know, they just trusted you to deliver it. And uh, I did things like pick the contestants out of the queue outside the studio. Well, I don't think you could do that now because they'd want to vet everyone and they'd want, you know, every everyone that appears on game shows appears to be quite naturally extrovert and wacky and, <laughs> and that's what they think will work. But I, I didn't know who they were, so it, it was all it was all... Well, in retrospect, quite dangerous, but I didn't... I, it was just a, a televisual form of my sta- stage act. The next thing I want to talk about is the Comedy Awards, where it all went wrong, oh, yes. and you went, and now you're back, which is great. In retrospect, I honestly believe it was a storm in a teacup. You made some comment about an important person that was perfectly within Julian Cleary's act. Was it just because it was a quiet news day that the sun effectively ruined your career at that point? Um, I don't know. Probably. I mean, I was bemused by the reaction. I I know that I'd said something um, a bit rude, but... um wasn't didn't think it was that rude to warrant front pages i um have a different take on it now in retrospect i think everything happens for a reason and uh, i was going through quite a difficult time and there was a lot of um um sedatives involved i was on sleeping tablets and valium and uh, i think that i needed a break and this is you know the universe sometimes gives you what you want when you can't ask for it yourself so i needed a break and you know if you want to clear your diary, go on live television and um, be rude about the Chancellor and uh, you'll find that um, bookings are cancelled and you've got a good six months to get yourself together. So I think, um, thank goodness that happened in a way. How does it feel when you wake up in the morning and you get your papers delivered and you're on the front page of them and you're just little Julian Clare in your little house, suddenly national news? It's not a little house. Um, <laughs> I didn't like it. I mean, I, infamy was not part of the plan. I, I didn't. But it was, it's, um, I mean, I can't believe we're still talking about it some 15 years later. But here we are. And uh, taxi drivers tell me what they were doing at that time and where they were. And I know um, when I die that the, the obituaries will mention it. So, I, you know, it's, it's, um, I was talking to Boy George recently about it and he said, oh, it's like him saying he'd rather have a cup of tea than sex. It's something I've got to learn to live with. Mm. It was quite a good joke. Um, at at the time, I'm not known for writing sort of <laughs> great jokes. <laughs> no, it's, it's, um, I do more more recycling is what I do, but um, it was quite a pleasing joke at the time. So there you go. 